Hey, it's your man Vate3 for Successful Convicts, and today we got a whole lot of stuff going on. Today kind of like kicks off that holiday season, the end of the year season. It goes from today, which is Thanksgiving, all the way over to New Year's, which starts the holiday of the first of the year. Kind of like the end of the year, the first of the year. You know, you got New Year's Eve, New Year. But it's a whole lot going on today, and I want to let you know about it. Please stick around so I can tell you about this because this is very important and a lot of people are not aware of it, but if you know, you know. Hey, it's your man, Vontae 83. And like I was telling you, something really big is going down today. Now, like I said, today kicks off that holiday season. Today is Thanksgiving. Like I said, I won't go into that. If you want to know about the real deal about Thanksgiving, check out my other video where I speak specifically on what this holiday means and the origins of this holiday and how it came to be what it is today. But I want to speak to y'all about those on the inside. Yes, wouldn't be successful convicts if I didn't mention the people that's on the inside. Now, what's going on on the inside? There's a whole lot going on in there too, you know, during the holiday season, the prisons, <coughs> excuse me, even the guards, I mean, the uh, the jails, they try to cater to the holiday season because you got to think a lot of them got to come to work. Well, if they there, of course, they got to come to work. Then, you know, I've heard a lot of them over talking about, you know, how much they getting paid overtime for coming in on their days off or their vacation or whatever. That's a whole nother story. But. They try to make it real, like accommodating towards the holiday. Like, for instance, today they probably cooking turkeys or they cooking Cornish hens. They making dressing. They got probably, I don't know if they serve pork in all prisons, but they be having ham. Almost everything that you make out here in the world for the family and for the uh, festive holidays, they make there in prison because in prison is different from jail because Jail is where you've been held until you sentence. So you could actually have a year or you could actually have life when you're in jail. You just don't know because you haven't been sentenced yet. Whereas when you get to prison, then it's more of like, like people, like, you know, certain prisons got, you know, you got 10 years or less, certain prisons you got from 30 down to 10. And then you got those penitentiaries where, you know, you got lifers and, double lifers and triple lifers and death row and all that type of stuff. But anyway, so the prison environment is a little bit better than the jail environment because you don't have that stigma over your head of how much time you're going to get. Long story short, it's a lot going on today inside the prison with the holiday stuff and, you know, people getting prepared to go to chow later on. Some people work in the kitchen, they go into chow. Then you got the people that's in the units that's cooking that they got stuff from the kitchen where they making little concoctions and, and meals and stuff like that. Like may, might be making turkey burritos, might be making uh, turkey nachos, might be making, you know, you got different cultures in prison as well. So you got those different cultures making their different culture dishes as well in the units amongst their groups. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, it's a whole lot going on. But the main thing that's going on and a lot of people don't talk about is depression. Depression, because late on, around, I'm gonna say, after child, up until the time the yard closed down, phone line, phone line's gonna be packed. Everybody standing in line, not every single body when I say everybody, but it's gonna be a long line today. Today is one of those days where it's a long line because people getting in line, they trying to call home, talk to their people because they know they can catch everybody at one spot. Yes, this is when that phone call from your uncle, your cousin, your niece, your daughter, your son, all those people get those phone calls and then you talk to them for a few seconds, then you pass the phone around. Oh, he go, auntie such and such. Oh, grandma want to talk to you. Oh, little cousin want to talk to you. Oh, this this my daughter talk to her. You know, and then you got to say, oh, man, the phone about to cut off because I'm going to tell you, that 15 minutes that you get to talk goes like that. 15 minutes seems like five minutes or less. And that's if you got money on the phone because that phone finna get to rotate and you finna get to talk to your cousin who 
promised to send you a book. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to talk to, you know, um, the girl next door that you always liked. And now you were locked up. You need a pen pal. You know, you're going to talk to grandma. Could never catch her. <clears throat> going to talk to that uncle that's going to try to tell you everything to do with your life. You know what I mean? Within that 15 minutes. Not knowing that you only got 15 minutes and you got to go get back in line. I know the prison I was in. After every phone call, you had to wait 30 minutes. So you make a phone call. You speak for 15 minutes. Now you got to wait another 30 minutes before you can make another phone call. So, you know, it's all that going on. But depression is what I was focusing on today. Because after you get off that phone call and you get to talking to people that you ain't talked to in a while or you ain't talked to since last year or you ain't talked to forever, you know what I mean? You might not never even talk to them at all. Like it might be one of your cousin's kids that's grown now that you ain't talked to your cousin in a long time and you ain't never talked to their kid. So after all that's over with, you got to go and you got to sit, you got to wait for that 30 minutes or you might not even have no more phone time left. You might even have no more money on the phone. Or you might not even have no money, period. But the whole mix of all that was going on inside the prison, what's going on outside the prison, whether you talk to people or not, then you know you got all the holiday TV shows. Man, it's making me sad thinking about it. Because, man, it, it gets depressing. Because you get to thinking about all the stuff that you missing out on. And then, you know, you're not getting letters because uh, unless you're a celebrity and you're getting a bunch of fan mail, nobody's getting a lot of mail like that. You know, it's just not. Unless I'm wrong, prove me wrong, write in the comments if I'm wrong, but nobody gets letters from everybody in their family. It just doesn't happen. You know, and you're not going to write everybody in your family. It just doesn't happen. And I was a writer. I was the type that write people. So I know from firsthand experience about the writing situation. And then it just gets the feeling like you forgot about, you know what I mean? You ain't there, you know, and all that stuff gets to set in. And that's when that depression comes. And depression is real. Even when you get out, you know what I mean? It's a lot of things that go down that you may not even comprehend that's going on inside your head. I know I was dealing with depression and I was fighting it. Not necessarily fighting it, but I didn't really analyze what was going on. I knew I was having like moments of sadness and being depressed and stuff like that, but I didn't uh, process it as depression. But now that I know what I know, thanks to my man Hassam Contreras, and you need to check his channel out too. I know that depression, well, I know from experience that depression is real, but I know that it's a thing called uh, working depression, uh, functioning, a functioning depression. And uh, I just want you to all to know what's going on on the inside. You know, your people in there, they're going through depression. Some of them going through it a little, some of them going through it a lot. You know, you got suicide uh, attempts. You got suicide watch teams, you know, which consist of inmates as well as staff. You know, I was part of the uh, inmate companion program for a minute where, you know, you have to go over there and you talk to people that's feeling depressed. And right about this time, the hol this end of the year holiday season, this is when those sales get packed. You know, this is when people need people to talk to. So I just wanted to let y'all know what's going on on the inside so that you can go check on your people. Check on your people. And this is a bonus. If you're the type that likes to help out, like go to homeless shelters and cook dinner for you know people that's homeless today and stuff like that, man, look into being a pen pal to somebody. Look into lifting somebody's spirits for the holidays. If not for as long as you can. I'm not going to say the duration of their sentence because some people got life, they ain't never coming home. But if you can extend yourself to pen pal somebody, man, that's a beautiful thing because those letters and stuff like that, you never know how big or how much it brightens somebody's day. 